Right, I'm just going to introduce, we've got um, a brilliant talker, Dave Murphy, he's coming to talk about um, energy and wh where the story has gone over the last few years on energy devices. No, I'm not. Practical free energy. Practical <laughs> free energy. Uh, so I'm going to say, let's welcome Dave Murphy, because he's got a mic and I haven't. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, yeah, it is practical free energy. The idea about this is uh, um, some of the things that... Uh, we can all do and just the idea that energy is basically all around us and this idea of having to generate energy is 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 almost ridiculous so just a few things that um anybody can go ahead and and, and do to to get power so i'm going to start with uh, i don't know this is a bit odd i'm going to have to stand sort of to the side of it i guess um let's start with the idea of the earth battery and this is the simplest of all Okay, you, you literally have to just stick two, two stakes of metal in the ground and you'll get a voltage between them. Okay, simple as that. Um, and if the, uh, the, two, the two stakes of metal have to be basically uh, different, different types of metal, it's a differential between those, those uh, pieces of metal that, that actually generate the, the voltage. And what you can do is, is chain them together. To, to actually get a, a decent decent amount of voltage. Um, here you can see uh, just two, two containers of earth with, uh, with um, a, I think is a copper and a zinc spike in each and it's generating enough to, to drive a, an LCD clock. Okay, um, the important thing there is to uh, get a good connection to the earth. So, if you're, if you're going to do a, a, a proper system, you need something like, um, I don't know, a car radiator as, as one of your earth points because that has a massive surface area compacted in a, in a small area. Um, the ground also should be kind of moist um, because in this, I don't want to get too technical, so I'm not going to go, um, go use long words like electrolytes and stuff, but you know, um, the, if the earth is moist, that conducts electricity a, a, a lot better. Um, so the spikes apparently have to be um, a, as far as apart as practical, as you know, because if you have them too far apart, the energy that you get will be lost in in the wiring that you uh, you have to use to connect them. So something like six foot apart is uh, is about you know, optimum, I'd say. But literally, if you if you get a whole, load, a whole row of spikes and, and chain them together, you'll generate um, a, a decent amount of electricity. And that electricity will be constant. Just your earth is just providing you with, with the energy constantly. So, you know, just have an experiment. I mean, I mean some of you might have um, come across using a lemon or something as a battery. Has anybody done that? Yeah, you just get a lemon or, um, uh, or an orange or something and uh, cut it in half, put two different types of metal in it and, uh, and put a, a meter on it and you'll, you'll find power. A small amount of power, but uh, it's power nonetheless. And you chain a few oranges together <laughs> and you can, you can, you can charge, your, your, your lap no, charge your laptop, charge your phone with it, you know? So, so, just with this very simple bit of knowledge, you can just experiment, have a, have a play around with it. So, um, I'm going to move on to a, um, um, something a bit more uh, um, sophisticated, and the idea of an um, uh, antenna to collect electricity. So, um, the basic um, part of it is, you, you basically have an antenna. Um, as much as, as, as tall as you can make it, actually, it's, it gets a bit dangerous because if you make it really tall, you're um, in danger of uh, attracting lightning strikes. But uh, you make a, a, an antenna as, as tall as you can make it, and these symbols here, if you're not into electronics, are, are called diodes. And the interesting thing about diodes is that they let electricity go through one way, but not the other, okay? So they look like little arrows. That means the electricity goes that way, but it doesn't go through that way. That's what that line is there to show. It goes that way, but not that way. That way, but not that way. 
So when the antenna picks up electromagnetic radiation, okay, this is, this is basically how radios work. It picks up this um, electromagnetic wave and induces a current in the antenna, okay, a small current, but that current is what's known as AC. That means it, it goes from positive to negative to positive to negative in a kind of wave, okay? What these do, because they only let current go through one way and not the other, they turn that AC current into a DC current. And DC means it's only, it's only going to be negative to positive, and it'll only stay, it'll always stay that way. So the antenna receives this AC wave and they, this is called what's known as a bridge rectifier. It turns that AC into a DC current. And this is a capacitor. Now, a capacitor is like a battery. It stores current. Um, but unlike a battery, it stores current very quickly. It soaks up energy very quickly. And it lets it out very quickly as well. Whereas battery will store current and then let it out slowly. So with this little, um, this little setup, it will start to charge this capacitor just from nowhere. And if this is a 50 volt capacitor, it'll end up with, you'll end up in, after you know, uh, 15, 20 minutes, you'll end up with 50 volts in that capacitor from, from the air. So <clears throat> you can get a bit more sophisticated with this. So with the addition of a couple more, um, couple of more capacitors in strategic locations and binding it to the earth, right, you can generate a, a larger current. Um, again, the, the difference here is you're getting energy from, from the sky, from the ambient atmosphere, okay, and you're contrasting it with the earth. There's that differential. Just like having two different metals in the ground generating current, you're getting that differentiation between the sky, which has you know, unlimited amounts of energy in it, and the earth. So you get that, that's that differential that causes a current flow. So with this little circuit, you, you get, actually you'll get enough power just for this little circuit to charge your phone. This, is, this circuit is a phone charger circuit. Yeah, you, you basically connect, connect the negative and positive to your phone. It will, after a couple of minutes, will start charging up. But if you view this, this little setup here as a module, so that equals this whole thing, yeah, then you can chain them together. Um, in this case, there's a, a, little, a few modifications here. Um, not only do you have, um, there's your antenna, but you have um, an earth to the antenna and you, you, you take a, a, a tap from, actually it's, it's also quite important that you, uh, you make the tap on the antenna to the earth halfway and uh, that goes into the top and the bottom that goes to the earth also goes to the earth there. Just um, a little modification. But you will end up having a, a, a bank of, of, uh, of batteries that uh, basically will produce a decent amount of power. Probably enough to, um, to rival a, a car battery. You, you, you stick enough of these together, you'll get, you'll get a, a, a real decent amount of power, which is, again, constant. Because, you know, the Earth will not change, the amount of power in the, in the atmosphere will not change. You'll get a constant supply of power. This is how, this is how easy it is. You know, it's, it's kind, of, kind of laughable that we're um, constrained to using um, solar power and wind power as the only source of alternative energy. Yeah? If, if there was um, research and, uh, and actual development put into just earth batteries and antenna systems, yeah, there, there'd be uh, enough power for everybody. So um, <laughs> I want to give you an idea of uh, this uh, static electricity generator. Um, I'm going to show you a little video now of about an, a, a well-known effect um, 
that's uh, very odd, but um, see if you can follow along. If anyone's got any questions, uh, by the way, just uh, feel free to uh, ask. Now I want to entertain you for the last six minutes with something amazing, something that is truly amazing. And it is a form of a battery that is mind-boggling. And the battery is right here on my, my left, on your right. It is a battery that produces an enormous potential difference. 10, 20 kilovolts. You see a schematic here on the uh, transparency. You have a bucket of water here on the top and you have glass and the bucket of water is hiding behind here not that because we hide it from you but that's the best place to be and you see plastic tubing coming down and the water can run out on the right and it can run out on the left if it runs out here there is a uh, some paint can no top and no bottom and you see this paint can here it's completely open the letter a and there's another paint can on the right there's a letter b it's a conducting can it is also a conducting can. And this water runs into another conducting trash can. And this water also runs into a conducting trash can. And now comes a key point. That this conductor here, A, is connected through a conducting wire with C. And the conductor B, the paint can, is connected with a conducting wire to this trash can D. You let the water run for a while, and you will see in between these two points here, sparks. Even when the points are as far apart as, say, five millimeters, when you're talking about at least the potential difference of something like 10, 15,000 volts, you will see the spark. And you wait, see another spark. And you wait, and you see another spark. So this is a power supply. And there must be energy coming from somewhere. And so problem 4.1, which you haven't seen yet on your force assignment, is asking you how this works. I will demonstrate it today and I will come back to it later. The way it works is actually quite subtle, but I want you to think about it. It's a remarkable battery, a remarkable power supply. As the water starts running, I want to draw your attention to the fact that you can almost anticipate when the, start, when the spark occurs. Because the water, at the very last, is beginning to spread. It doesn't come out anymore just like a narrow cylinder, but it begins to spread. And then comes the spark. And then it goes back to running normally, and then slowly in time it will spread, and then comes the spark. So let us get it going, we have some light here, Marcos and Bill spent a lot of time getting this going, Marcos do we have all my lights the way you want them, you're happy with that, there you see the two balls, which are really here, and let's first look at the sparks, so I will start the water running now, Let's just be patient a little bit. And let's see where we're seeing spark. Keep, ah, did you see one? Did you see the spark? Oh, you were not looking. Man, paying for this. Look at the, uh, look at the two balls. Give it some time again. Have to charge up. Oh, I can already anticipate it's coming up. Coming up, yeah. Did you see it? <laughs> 10, 15,000 volts. <laughs> Let's give it a little bit more time and then we'll uh, take a look at the water flow, which I can see close. So we can make you see the water flow. Look again. Ah, it's coming up. Ah, did you see it? I can see it coming up. I can make you listen by having my microphone near the water and you can hear this water running. It's really the sound of all of us. And now, the sound changes. You hear change? And there's a spark. 
Посмотрим. This running. Spreading. Coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? I can make you see this water. Just stay there. We have one and a half minutes left. So now you can see the water. You happy with the light markers? You can improve on it. So look at the water. Ah, it was just spreading already. You can't see the spark and the water at the same time. So the water is running now normally. It's going to spread slowly. I will tell you when I see the spark here, but it's already, I can almost predict when it happens. The water is spreading now. Coming up shortly. Yeah, it's on the spark. Right, and you immediately see the water go like this. I want you to think about it and explain this. This is one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen in my life. So, that, was, uh, that experiment was called uh, Lord Kelvin's Thunderstorm, okay? Um, literally, it's, as you see, it was creating sparks of, of around 50,000 volts just with water falling between, between paint cans. 50,000 volts. But the, the, the current, the amp, ampage, was very, very low. So it would have given you, if you put your hand between them, it would have given you a sort of little jolt, but it wouldn't have killed you. Yeah. Um, just, like, uh, just like if you've ever touched or gone anywhere near the ignition and the spark, um, your spark plug on your car while it's running, has anybody ever done that and um, got, a, got a, sh a jolt off of that? Yeah. Right? That's interesting. You see, the same sort of thing is, um, the same sort of thing is happening there. Okay? You get, you're getting, um, from this experiment, you're getting a, uh, a high voltage spark, but of low amps. And I thought, I realised that the reverse is happening in, in your car. You've got a, a 12 volt battery, so low voltage, but high ampage, okay, a power source that's going into an ignition coil and being stepped up to something like uh, 40,000 volts to cause the spark in your spark plug. So, in, and what you're seeing here in this diagram is the same setup that we just watched, okay, but instead of creating a, um, a spark between the two um, buckets here, we're taking that, um, that power and putting it into uh, to a spark plug. Uh, that's the spark gap. And the other side of the spark plug going into an ignition coil. And then from the output of the ignition coil going to, into the battery. So we're reversing what's going on in your car. So we're getting a high voltage, low ampage spark here. Okay, going into the spark plug, being stepped down to a Low voltage, uh, low voltage, high current um, spark, basically, uh, impulse. So that's enough to charge a battery. Yeah? Does everyone follow that? Audience participation. Yes, Dave? <laughs> well, this is the thing. Um, it's about charging batteries. The thing about static electricity, yeah, we, we, we see it all the time. We, uh, you know, you, you rub a balloon and you, you'll, um, you'll find it will spark. But nobody's really ever found a way to, uh, to use that energy. You know, we all know it's there. Um, but this is a way of using, actually using that energy to charge batteries. So if you've got, um, you know, a, a source of water, and you saw in, this, in that experiment, he used um, just a tubing, but you could use a, a hypodermic needle to, use, to get that stream. It's not the volume of water that uh, causes that spark, it's the fact that the water's going through that environment that's uh, creating that energy. So you can use a hypodermic, you don't need an awful lot of water, you just use a very fine stream. Um, and you can set up banks of these and, and just have this charging batteries, just with water. Yeah? So is this the same sort of uh, energy field that uh, a water dowser would be tapping into? Pardon the pun. 
I, I, I would say not actually, because um, the way I see it, if you, you heard my talk yesterday, you'd, uh, I actually mentioned this. Um, I think, you know, as humans, or all animals on this planet actually can sense water um, innately. We, we are not aware of that sense in ourselves, and we still have it, but we can only access it subconsciously. And what happens when you're dowsing is that, uh, you know, you subconsciously sense the water and your subconscious makes micro movements of your hand to, to cause the, the rods to go together or whatever, even if you're using a pendulum, you know, you're, you sense it and your, your subconscious makes you actually make a, 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 a sign with the pendulum. But isn't it the flow of water is creating an energy field? That's, yes, that, that's actually, that, um, it, the pyramids, uh, were, the, one of the uh, suggestions is the pyramids are a power source and underneath the pyramids there is, there is a, a, a flow of water um, and I was going to say um, when we were talking about the earth battery um, yes it's good to have the, the, the earth moist but um, what's interesting would be a, a flow of water and as we've seen the f flow of water there causes electricity to be formed so, you know, it kind of lends that um, the credence, the idea that the pyramids are a power source, that they had uh, um, a water course going underneath the pyramids, flying across the pyramids. Have, uh, yeah. water courses through Today, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it starts to, it starts to look like they're, they're more than just tombs, they're actually more of a power source. The walls, the walls in the pyramids, especially the bottom, actually make, make Right, yeah, this is the thing, you know, that's uh, this ancient technology that, uh, you know, we look at it and we, see, we can't actually see any technology, or well, the technology is in the structure, it's in the physical makeup of the, uh, of the structure. So we can't find any, we're not going to find, uh, you know, uh, PP3s, and, you know, AA batteries lying around, you know, they, they were generating it from, uh, in a natural way. And I'm not even sure that... Uh, it's electricity we're talking about, because um, oh, I'll get into that in a little while. But this is the, the point I'm trying to make here: is that this water, falling water, generates or attracts electricity, and and we can actually use that in a practical way. Um, as I said, you, you've, you've seen it done. You saw how simple it was to start um, generating sparks. Yeah, you can do this at home. So um, you can also mix and match a few of these, these ideas. Um, again, you've seen this before. This is the, uh, the antenna with a diode just to, um, rather than um, rectify the, the AC that's coming in completely, you, you're doing it a slightly different way just by letting only half the wave through this, this, this uh, diode. Um, again, into a, a spark gap, you've got a spark gap and a capacitor. So the capacitor is charging up, as it does, and then when it reaches a, um, a high, enough, uh, um, uh, uh, high enough charge, there'll be a spark. And then you can take that spark and step it down and, and uh, charge batteries. So it's a, a kind of mixing and matching of what, all the things we've seen so far. Um, again, because what we've got here is um, the conditions for, for a massive battery. You've got the Earth as, as one node of that battery and you've got the in, uh, atmosphere as the other. It's a battery. Um, it's one that, um, that uh, Tesla himself basically uh, uh, used um, to better effect than uh, anybody else, that um, the, using the Earth as, um, as a conductor, as a battery that we could all tap into. Um, if any, anyone's ever heard of uh, Wardenclyffe Tower, uh, his big experiment that got shut down by JP Morgan. Um, literally, he, he built a, a massive tower um, that was going to transmit electricity all around the world. And literally all you had to do was, uh, was have a little antenna to pick up this power. Um, and and you'd, you'd have unlimited power. Everybody would have, have unlimited power. Um, 
So as I said, the, the Earth is one side of the, the, the battery and the, the atmosphere is the other side. So as I said, this is, this is not very difficult. We're not talking about um, masses of components and lots of uh, you know, confusing electronics to do. Anyone can do this. Oh, I'm going backwards. Okay. So um, now I want to talk about um, something that I'm playing around with. It's called a Bedini Energizer. And uh, it's a little too loud or anything. But, um, so what it is, is a, um, a magnetic motor. And what you're seeing there is a, a build, a little build video of, the, of my one. Um, it's a magnetic motor. Um, you've got a rotor with uh, a whole number of, um, of magnets around the outside and coils around that rotor and literally the, uh, it spins the, spins the motor around, you, you actually power it with a, a car battery and it spins the rotor around and it generates more power than you basically put into it and it charges up. This one particularly will charge up a bank of 20 car batteries from one. Um, what it was, it was named after, it's called the SSG, Simple Schoolgirl Circuit, because it was named after um, uh, the fact that a 10-year-old girl wanted to do a, uh, a school project. Uh, not a school project, it was like a um, science fair type thing. And she, she was neighbours with this guy, John Bedini. And... Uh, <laughs> He basically sketched out on a piece of paper uh, this little circuit and said, go and build this. And what she did, she built this thing, very, very similar to this, but with one coil and one small circuit and a bicycle wheel with uh, magnets strapped to the outside. Okay, and with this little contraption, she, she had a light bulb running from a, a little nine volt battery for two weeks because this, this thing will just keep charging itself up. Uh, and she, she kept this light going on for, for two weeks, whereas it would have lasted for a couple of hours, normally. Uh, so yeah, this, is, this, is, this video is when we, find, we first got the 10 coil, um, 10 coiler running. And it was really exciting because uh, the battery we had it on was a big tractor battery, and um, we didn't get, have the connection to it on properly and we got Tesla style sparks coming off of this thing it was just like <gasps> and and the uh, we we're watching how it was being charged up and it and we could see the charge building like it was like 11 volts 11 and a half volts 11.7 12 it was like oh this is going too fast <laughs> um, so this is the circuit and this is this is actually the uh, um, the schoolgirl um, bicycle wheel on top there. So um, this this might be a little sciencey, but um, and electronicsy, but I'll go through how this circuit works. Okay. So there are two coils on on this coil, and this is a uh, this is one I'm winding actually. I'm going to go back to that. Um, it's uh, this particular one has three strands of wire, all all sort of twisted together and wrapped around um, this spool with welding rods in, in the middle, okay? So that, that coil is represented here, but this one's just got two windings on it, okay? So, when one of these magnets comes close to this, this coil, what it does is induce a, a small current in, in this coil here, okay? And what happens is that current comes through here and goes into this transistor. And what a transistor is, is like a switch. It's a very clever switch. If you put a little bit of current in here, in this side, it opens a pathway for current to go through here. That's all it does. And if you put a little bit in here, this opens up, this switch opens up a, a proportional amount. Um, so if you put like half a volt in here, it'll let five volts through there. If you put one volt in here, it will, it will let 10 volts through. Yeah, so it's a proportional switch, kind of. So, a, it induces a current here and opens this switch, which lets a current go through this coil here, which magnetizes these rods 
and then pushes the magnet away. And that's what starts the, uh, the, the, the wheel to go around. So it pushes the magnet away, and as the magnet moves away, the current disappears here, the switch turns off, okay? And now this is the, the weird bit, okay? When the, uh, uh, there's a very strange effect, uh, people in electronics know about, we all know about it, but um, we're all only taught that we have to protect our, our uh, circuit from it. It's called back EMF. And what, what happens is, if you, if you have a coil with a switch and a, a battery, and you, you energize the coil, when you turn, that, you, you turn that switch off, a strange thing happens. You get a spike of energy um, higher than you, you had in the original circuit, go backwards through the circuit. Okay, so here we've got a 12 volt circuit with the, uh, the battery here. Okay, when, you, when this switch turns off, all of a sudden you get a 300 volt spike go backwards through this circuit. And as, as um, people in uh, you know, electronic engineers, we have to um, put something across our switch to protect the, you know, protect this, um, this transistor from being burnt out by 300 volts. So we have to, in this case, I put a neon bulb so that if, uh, if the power goes through there, it will actually go through the neon first and not through here and destroy my, my, um, my transistor. So this weird effect called back EMF um, is a, a massive spike of energy from somewhere that goes backwards through the, through the circuit. And we've got, this, we've got this, um, this diode here. Remember I said the diode will let power go through one way but not the other. So this diode is shunting the power that's gonna go backwards into your charging battery. So what you, you end up with, as these magnets go past here, you just, you just get um, these pulses of 300 volts or more sometimes get, getting fired into these charging batteries. Um, so does, does everybody follow that? <laughs> yeah, am I above in sort of, yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is the thing. This is the thing. What we're doing here is talking about charging batteries. Because it's the simplest way of, of dealing with this. Once you've got a charge set of batteries, yeah, you can get this thing called an inverter. And I've got one in my, in my van, which is a, a 5 kilowatt inverter. Okay, 5,000 watts of power. Your house um, would typically run between 7 and 10 you know, well, no, so maybe from five to, to, to about eight kilowatts, depending on what you've got in your house. You know, if you've got um, a five kilowatt inverter and you um, are kind of economical on uh, some of the things you use, um, then that's enough to power your house completely. You know, everything in your house running off this, uh, this inverter. Okay, if you've got a bank of a 10, 20 car batteries running off of one battery here, yeah, and I'm going to show you something uh, a little later on, but that's enough to keep your house powered. And you leave the energy in the back door, but it's a storage, but it's using the excess, you put it into something to store it. Well, that's what a battery is, it's a storage device for the power, you know. Sorry, say again? Sorry, can you speak up? Sorry. Yeah, there was a guy, I went down solar panel course in London. Mm -hmm. There was a guy, the lecturer, who was actually teaching people to sew these solar cells on cloth. Yeah. Because he was doing a project out in Africa to see the Africans how to produce their own solar energy. But inverters and deep cycle batteries. Yeah. You take all the power from that to power your house? Or yes. Um, 
Right, yeah, you, could, you, can, um, you can actually change your house to a 12 volt house if you want. I mean, that's, a, that's a one way of going and it's probably a better way of going. But, um, but if you wanted to, the minimum change, um, you could just get one of these inverters, which is really just stepping up 12 volts up to two, 240 volts, okay? Um, which is, if you go to, to a, a completely 12 volt house, it's an un unnecessary step. But, you know, if you, if you want to keep all the things you're, you're using, then you need an inverter to, to step up that 12 volts to 240. Um, but if you have, you know, deep cycle batteries, 100, say 100 amp hours each, yeah, you've got 10, 10 of those batteries, you've got 1,000 amp hours. So the thing will last for, um, uh, if you're only using one amp, it lasts for a thousand hours. Sorry. Uh, when I saw on the website these, I did try and track them down. Mm -hmm. I noticed there was somebody manufacturing them in the States. Yes. About $4,000, I think. Well, that's the, the one I showed you, the, uh, the little video that was running. That, that's one of them. That's a 10 coiler from John Bedini himself. And is that, um, can you get them in the UK? No, you can't. Why? Because John Bedini is in America. <laughs> Sure you, I, I did. Uh, I ended up having, having it delivered, but it, it, they uh, they stung you on import duties and stuff as well. So, yeah, it's. But you know what? It's it's not hard to make yourself. I'm, I said I'm I'm I've just started winding coils for a, for another one. Um, but um, I so I'll get into that in a little while. But um, was I? Yeah, sorry. There's a leisure part where you use a caravan or a camper um, well, yeah. If you look on look on batteries, uh, I'll tell you what um, what the capacity is, and it'll be in, in amp hours. So, if it's a hundred amp hours, that means at one amp, if it's delivering one amp, it will last a hundred hours. But if it's uh, ten amps you're using, it's going to last ten hours. Yeah. So yeah, you, if you're going to have a bank of batteries, you want to make sure the the highest capacity you can you can manage. Um, so, um, the, the, the difference between deep cycle and car is the car is very much more sharp energy. Yeah. Deep cycle stores it and releases it slowly. slowly yeah. That's why they're more expensive. That's the difference between deep cycle and car. Okay. Cars are okay, but they will break down. They won't last as long. That's, That's right. Yeah. If you have 10 batteries, how do you go about maintaining them? Sorry? Main batteries, how would you maintain batteries? Well, um, I was going to go into this a bit later, but, but, but uh, actually this, this design, because it's being charged up in a different way than, um, than most other chargers work, those spikes of high energy yeah, actually recondition the batteries. They make the batteries better than they were when they were first manufactured. <laughs> you know, they, they end up working at 110% capacity. This is, and, and I say, I'm, go, I'm going into that later on, but, um, uh, oops, there we go. Here's, here's my This is my prototype. Energy Energizer. Um, it's uh, basically the uh, same familiar circuit that uh, everyone else is, uh, is using. Um, the only difference here is that um, instead of using the pot, um, as a, a pot and a resistor, um, I have a, a 680 ohm resistor in there instead of the pot. Um, otherwise, it's it's pretty pretty straightforward. Okay, um, I'm actually trying to charge a car battery, which you can see is under here. Um, I've just hooked up a. My battery charge. No, it says which, 45 percent. Um, there, up so I can tell okay. the the percentage of battery charges. That's got a good indicator on there. So here we go. Let's uh, let's give it a go. Okay. Let's give it a spin. Sorry. Um, Noticing it doesn't have a very um, high RPM. It's uh, based on a, oh, no. um, a hard disk pattern. The circuits um, isn't that big. <laughs> I guess the, uh, I'm, I'm just guessing that the aluminium uh, frame there, and the fact that it's got, uh, it's essentially got a motor in the back there, um, so the magnet in the back of that uh, motor probably is 
interfering with it. But anyway, it's um, off it goes. Uh, looking at a voltage um, on the primary battery of 12.8. And a look at the uh, voltage on the. Well, I can't actually see it here. Voltage on. Probably can't see that. The voltage is 12.28 on there. And so that's about a minute later. Almost. Um, it's almost immediately. 52 volts. The time of. Uh, uh, sorry? Shut up to 52, 52, 52, 52 percent, sorry, 52 volts. Okay, sure. 52 percent in a minute. Good, that's it. Um, there it is. Uh, leave it on charge for a, for a while. See how we do. Um, one, one weird effect, now I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone has uh, noticed this. Um, when I put a when I connect the pot up and uh, increase the resistance, the the motor actually stops working. But I get a, a very strange resonance effect, um, and the, the circuit seems to be self-sustaining. Um, I'll I'm, I'm going to reconfigure this and uh, and and show you later on. But uh, it's a very very strange effect. Um, I'll show you that later. Um, I actually burnt out the transistor of uh, my original design. I was messing around with uh, Inotep Relay Energizer and uh, I tried to combine the outputs of the two and end up, ended up blowing up the transistor. So I've rebuilt it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have um, another um, 10k pot. So I've used the 5K, so it doesn't give me quite the same results. I'm just going to show this um, very strange resonance effect that I, uh, I came across the first time. Now, I turn the pot all the way down, so basically all, I'm, all I've got uh, as resistance in the uh, base of the transistor is uh, 100 ohms. So we're going to start it up. Okay, runs as normal. Um, as I turn up the pot, turn up resistance, notice it slows down and stops. But if I, uh, I'm to get this quite right, there you go. Now it seems I've started the, the kind of magnetic resonance Basically, like uh, it's like I think it's like audio feedback um, that the uh, magnetic flux from the magnets going round started a um, or induced a current in the in the trigger coil, which then induced a current in the in the power coil and the collapsing magnetic fields induced another um, current in the trigger and so on and so on, and you, you're getting a I believe you're getting a feedback. Uh, response. Now, the interesting thing is, as I increase the resistance, you can quite hear it, the frequency goes up. And again, I've only got a 5k here, so I can only get this this, uh, this particular frequency out of it. Um, my previous version, the frequency went up a lot higher. Um, now, I'm just going to Trying to get a nice, uh, nice resonance there. Now, the only reason you're hearing the sound, I guess it's an accident really, is because I'm using this, this hardless platter, which is like a metal, a metal platter. If I touch it, you can see it's, it's literally the um, magnetic flux in the, uh, in the coil um, that's actually um, you know, uh, attracting and repelling the magnet and, and vibrating the, the platter. You see, as I've moved the magnet away, you, you don't hear the noise so much. Um, if I rotate it back, um, I 
have to say that it's not a badly designed circuit that's causing this. The circuit is correct. The only difference is that I've increased the resistance in the base of the transistor. The circuit is kicking out voltage here. Um, I don't have a voltmeter um, hooked up to it. Um, however, if I disconnect the charging battery, notice that our little neon here is lit, proving that there's at least 120 volts kicking out here. So we can tell that uh, even though the, the wheel isn't spinning, we're getting um, a motionless energizer effect. So um, that was uh, actually my, my prototype um, that I, I, when I first started on the Bedini trail, um, I was just playing with it, playing that very simple circuit. And I mean, as you saw there, I, I made a mistake. I put the wrong um, value resistor in there and all of a sudden the thing started working without the wheel running. Um, and, and yet it actually, it actually sit, sat there and kicked out power. So um, right now, as, as I, I showed you this, I'm, I'm actually winding coils now to do a, uh, um, a multi-coil version of, of that motionless one to, uh, to power my motorhome. So, uh, you know, watch this space. So, <clears throat> that, that circuit that um, I showed you earlier on is, is literally this, this part. It's just this part. And um, that, the 10 coiler I, saw, I showed you earlier is literally the same circuit just replicated over and over again. This is so simple. It's that, that one simple little circuit yeah, it just replicated over and over again. Um, in the case of that big 10 coiler, 80 times. There's 80 different circuits in there. Okay? Um, and each, of, each circuit is just kicking out spikes of, of energy. So as you see, it's, it's very simple to ex extend and expand. And later on I'll show you that um, the guy who sold me the kit, the, the 10 coiler kit, he's made a 30 coiler and you'll be able to see what, what that does. And this is it actually, this is a video. Okay, very connected. What we're looking at here are cell tower batteries. Um, yeah, um, 2,000 amp hours, okay? Volts. They stand about that high, that, that wide. And you can see up here. And they're being charged by these two little batteries. Oh, yeah, these batteries right here yeah. not and There's 24 batteries. of these cell tower batteries. These have been on there for... Uh, See, so these are two input batteries. These two little ones. Uh, and now we're going to turn on the switch. The big one, the, the ones so he's charging up. These batteries, which are now... They're that high, <laughs> that, that round, and they're 2,000 so amp hours. So one of those batteries will uh, give 48, 48 volts for 2,000 hours at one amp. And so one of those could run, power your house for, voltages. for I don't know, maybe a week. We're not pushing it very hard at the lower voltages. But you can see the back part bouncing around. And what he's done, because that motion, that uh, um, Revolution of these uh, these rotors are essentially just free. You know, you know, you're not using it for anything. What he's got at the back are coils that will charge up the the charging battery, the uh, the powering batteries. So the thing would run um, almost forever on its own because the input batteries are being charged up by the ones uh, at the back. Fully charged. But when you're talking about 10 amps, 11 amps, 12 amps maybe, at 22 volts. So can you see the power of this thing? Going in. Those two little batteries keeping that massive bank of batteries, which will probably keep a, a neighborhood um, going for, uh, for a week. 
Yeah. Being charged up by those two little So I guess there. what you want to do with these systems is charge up a bigger. Sorry. Battery there are some challenges to do that. Right. This is this is the a thing. Is, is you can see um, the no, I'll, I'll speak about that in a little while. Actually. These are the neon bulbs here. Um, but anyway, this. Now we have resistance. It was just uh, um, to show that literally. <laughs> This, this Bedini Energizer is extremely powerful. Um, just those two small batteries being able to charge up. And, and sorry, I, I meant to mention that there are 12 volt batteries, these two little input ones, wired up in series to, to give 24 volts. So that the wheel was being powered by 24 volts. But what was coming out of it was um, enough power to charge up all those 24 cell tower batteries that run 48 volts each. So it doesn't seem to make sense, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's very powerful. John, is there any... Uh, Dave. Oh, sorry, Dave. Is there any practical problems with the energy or the power of that? The practical problem there is that, uh, yeah, it's, the batteries are being charged, but not with electricity. It doesn't seem to be electricity as we know it. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, it's some other form of energy. So you can't really run the uh, inverter off, the, off these batteries while they're being charged. Because it's, there's, there's two types of energy going on in, at the same time, it seems. Um, and I, I, I don't know what's actually going on, but uh, Tesla, when he was doing his experiments, um, was coming up with a form of energy that wasn't electricity, but somehow behaved somewhat like electricity. But he was calling it radiant energy, wasn't it? Radiant energy, yeah. So can we power our house? You can. I'm saying John Bedini powers his house with this bank of batteries that he keeps charged up with, uh, with his, uh, his ten coil. you're using the energizer to convert it. What you yeah. do... What you do is you have two banks of batteries. You charge one while you're using the other, and you switch between. And you switch them over. Yeah. Can you automate the switching? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes. Yes, you can. And so, what, sorry, the next question might be um, a silly question, but what has stopped this um, coming in practice? Well, it is, it's not stopped it. There are people in America who have already got houses that are, are being powered by, by systems like this and others. But in the it's mainstream, not, you're not, not going to get it. It's not coming into yeah. the mainstream. If it ever comes into the mainstream, mm -hmm. um, then the problem is whoever comes out will either be discredited. Mm -hmm. it, first, they ignore you. Yeah. Then they discredit you. Then you win. Yeah. But a lot of them, they're killing off as well. So well, they're, they're there them. is an example. Sorry, sorry. Can we just so we can have what that man was saying to people who are doing Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have come up with these kinds of things before. So first, the, you know, the, 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 the powers that be, if you or were, will ignore you. So they don't want this uh, technology sure. out. Uh, if you do get too big, uh, they'll discredit you. Um, otherwise, they'll, they'll try and buy you out. So the, uh, the, there were a couple of guys in Australia who came out with a, a similar kind of uh, tech. technology. And uh, all of a sudden, they, they said that they'd have a home generator within a year or something. This mm -hmm. was on the net. And then you never heard about them, you, ne you don't even know, I've never seen no, them. No, it's Lutec, the company, Lutec, and you, yeah. they disappeared. They disappeared, nobody knows where these guys are now. So they've either been bought out or bumped off, I don't know. The, um, there was a story just recently, um, in the last year, of a guy in Glasgow, in a council house, who disconnected his electricity, and he had a free energy device powering his house. And the council broke in and, uh, and, and stripped it out, and they, they, took it, they took him to court. What? And they said, it's, no, he's, he's making, you know, generating his own electricity in a dangerous fashion. <laughs> so yes, they, they, they're, they're making sure that you can't do this. You can't generate your own power. Yeah? <laughs> well, you can. They're, they're trying to make it that you can't legally. Yeah. You know, they're, they're using this legal thing to say, well, well, it's illegal now, so you can't do it. And they'll use their, their attack dogs, you know, with, with uniforms to stop you. Sorry. Speaking of dangerous fashion, there are reports on the internet that they're building a mini solar system that will power the whole city. Yeah. Yeah. And they're 
um, if it is true, what is dangerous? And why are we not getting a level uh, to... We've been lied to about nuclear power. There's a, if you go on the internet and you'll find a kid, a 15-year-old kid, who built a nuclear reactor. He, he collected you know, nuclear material from smoke detectors and, uh, and you know the fluorescent material on, phone, on, um, on old what, uh, clocks? Yeah? You, buy, you can collect that stuff, scrape it off and, and, and dissolve it and you'll be left with some nuclear material. Yeah? He built a nuclear reactor. This 15-year-old kid. Um, actually, he, he, the source of his information was a, a book, um, from a Boy Scout book from the 1930s that said how to build a nuclear reactor. <laughs> you know? This is a thing. We've been lied to. There's a, there's a guy called... Um, uh, I've forgotten his name now. No, 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 no. Yeah, um, it will come to me. There's a guy who was... Um, uh, a, a nuclear react, uh, engineer in the early days when they were first building nuclear power stations okay and his testimony was that when they were working this place before health and safety came in they were walking around with um, plutonium rods in their pockets they knew that as long as they didn't they, they kept them apart yeah and and they didn't allow them to reach critical mass you know, otherwise there'd be a big blue spark, a big blue, blue flash. Yeah, but as long as they kept them apart, they were safe. They swam in the containment pools. You know, this guy even ate some new, some uranium. He 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 says that um, all of a sudden these people turned up and said, "Oh, okay, you're going to have to wear these these badges that show you if you've had a safe dose." Safe dose. You know, we've been we've been playing around with this stuff for ages. None of us are sick. None of us feel bad or anything. But they impose these limits, and anybody who said otherwise got fired. Mm -hmm. Anybody who said no, this is rubbish, they, they got they got let go. Um, so so yeah, we, this idea of um, of dangerous nuclear power is is um, somewhat of a fraud. What about radiation sickness? Well, <laughs> okay, this is, this is where I, um, I came in and, and thought of something odd because um, I was talking to a guy in America and he said that he'd just come back from um, visiting Hiroshima. And I was like, what? Isn't that like a nuclear wasteland? <laughs> you know, we're told that, you know, when there's a, a nuclear explosion, the land's irradiated for thousands of years. But Hiroshima is a thriving city. And it's a, a healthy place. Chernobyl is a is a now that there's nobody there, the wildlife has gone crazy. Yeah. The wildlife is healthy. There were wolves that have come back into that area, and uh, the, you know, and there were, there's actually a whole bunch of um, old women who decided they, they're not going to move, and they're in their 80s and 90s, yeah, and they live in the contaminated zone. And they eat the food grown in that zone. We've been lied to. So would you put that down to Fukushima? Because Fukushima we, we, just told, we just told stuff, aren't we? We don't know what's actually going on. You know? But what I know, uh, um, the name is on the tip of my tongue, Win Windsor. Windsor, I think his name is. Um, I was gonna, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna bug me. I'm gonna wake up at four o'clock in the morning. And go, ah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, no. But um, yeah, this this guy basically, um, has, for me, blown the lid off, off of this because, as I said, it's not, it's not what we've been we've been told um, uh, falsehoods here. It's it's all lies. Um, something else is going on. So yeah. What about the radium dial company then, and what happened to all the workers there? Um, again, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, not, I, I'm saying that there's, there's something fishy here. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to go into um, conspiracy theories, yeah? but I know that there's something, something not right about what we've been told. And um, something else Einstein would say about nuclear power, um, it's a hell of a way to boil water. <laughs> And I've always wondered, what does he mean by that? It's a hell of a way to boil water. We think of nuclear power stations as like the, you know, the peak of uh, our technological power here. Okay? 
But when you look at what a nuclear power station is, it uses nuclear material to heat water and power steam engines. 19th century technology. Is that the best we can do? I don't think so. The awesome power of the atom, yeah, which is a power source in itself, we're using it to boil water. Yeah, think about that. Anyway, so you started me on the rant. So, <laughs> so um, here are the surprising results from, uh, from the uh, Bedini Energizer. Now, I wanted to bring the Bedini here and show you it working and stuff, okay? But when I, dis when I went around to collect it, I discovered I it wouldn't fit in my van. I couldn't get it in the van. It had all the windows out and everything, and it wouldn't, wouldn't fit. So, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, it, obviously it charges um, a large bank of batteries from one single battery. Yeah, it, as I said before, it reconditions batteries to to better than they were um, when they were new. They start uh, once you've once you've run them through uh, charging cycles, one or two charging cycles. You start to notice that they start um, holding more energy. You know, they're, they're rated at uh, around about 13 volts. Yeah, you, you end up with like 14, maybe 15 volts. You know, just amazingly. If you've got um, laptop batteries, now if anybody's uh, used their laptop for any length of time, they find their, their battery efficiency starts to, to, to go down to the point where, you know, they, they last like five minutes, you know, where they used to last five hours, yeah? When you, you, you put a, uh, one of those dead laptop batteries on, on the Bedini, they charge up to new and sometimes better than you. Um, oh, this was odd as well. Um, there's a, a guy on YouTube who's uh, showing his Bedini working, charging up a battery, and he's got one of those um, uh, temperature meters that uses a laser, yeah, and he's pointing at things. Um, he measures the temperature of the ambient air around, and the, and the walls, and the bench, and they, they come out around about 60 degrees. It measures the battery that's being charged, it's at 49 degrees. So rather than um, you know, the usual charging method that ends up heating the battery, this one cools the battery. Very odd. And um, uh, I mentioned about the rotor, yeah, that uh, when, when you've got the thing spinning, yeah, that's literally just a, a, an off, a kind of effect. You know, and you, you don't really use that. But when you do use that, uh, that rotor for anything, say you put a fan on it, it will try to slow the rotor down because of the drag on the, on the fan. But placing some, some load on that, uh, on that wheel actually makes it um, draw less current from the input battery. So the more you load that wheel, the longer it's gonna last. <laughs> so you can actually use the wheel to do, do actual work and it will, it will cause the, the, uh, the, the whole setup to, to last longer. That's very surprising. But there were more results. Sorry, Dave. Mm -hmm. Is it about the guy in Glasgow with the council place? Yeah. The council came along and said, oh, you can't do this because it's not signed. Was he in the council house? Yeah. yeah. So what's to stop us from doing it for a private Well, um, I, I don't know. I don't think there is anything to stop you. But you see, if you if you disconnect your disconnect your oh yeah, that's that's the other thing. Yeah, they might come in and say your well, your electrics aren't up to code, and they'll you could run on twelve volt, but again, you don't know. They don't want us to be energy independent. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so uh, above the surprising results, we got some unexpected results. The thing runs better at night. So when the sun is not in the same, same side of the world as this thing, it, run, it runs better. Something about the sun's magnetic field interferes with uh, the operation of this, this motor. And <laughs> plants go crazy around this thing. We, um, we had this running, uh, first of all, in a, in a farmhouse, okay, and um, in this barn uh, we had all sorts of plants 
which were on their last legs, including an African violet, which doesn't really grow very well in this country. Okay, while this was this was running, and we had this running for um, a long periods of time. Yeah, that African violet just flourished and grew and and you know bloomed. And then when we disconnected it and sort of dismantled it, moved it, this thing died. Just amazing. Um, <laughs> Now, my friend Nolan, um, I, I, gave, I gave my Bedini to because he, he's a, a prodigious experimenter. Um, so he's, he's got it in his garage. And he's been doing all sorts of uh, experiments with it. And he's discovered that the efficiency is different according to who's near it. And he's, he's watched it. He's watched the efficiency go down when somebody in particular approaches it. You know, as, as they approach it, the efficiency goes down. As they move away, it goes up again. Does it have some sort of negative effect on it? No. This, this is the thing. He also says that he, you know, he, there's a good feeling he gets while, while being around this thing. And well, I, it picks up something about people because when Nolan is playing with it and he's, uh, he's, he's doing his thing with it, it's running, you know, really, really, really well. But when somebody else, um, and he, we haven't really sort of uh, experimented with some evil people, <laughs> you know, but maybe we should. Um, but when somebody else, you know, starts the thing going and, and whatever, it doesn't run as well. But we are energy, aren't we? We, we are energy. Are energy. We're all we are energy. So. Um, so I think. Maybe it's time for us to change our approach to what energy is. Because um, more is going on than we've been told. As I said, um, Tesla, when he was playing with, um, with electricity, he was, he was discovering that what, was, what he was generating wasn't electricity, it was something else. It was something he could see um, moving across the top of wires rather than through it or, or whatever. It was, it was something that um, when he was generating electricity in one area, he was getting shocks off of, uh, off of door handles um, in, you know, throughout the university. And the further he was getting away from it, the stronger the shocks were. So there's a lot, lots going on that we've not been taught about. And, and they say that energy can't be created or destroyed. So why are we generating electricity? How are we generating electricity? What we're, see we're seeing is that electricity might not be what we're really supposed to be getting. Electricity seems to be a byproduct of the real energy. Um, and consciousness plays a part in it somehow. Um, yeah, what if, what if the real energy is, is attracted, not generated? So, what is energy? Yeah, we've been told about the three states of matter, you know, um, gas, liquid, solid. But there is also a fourth state. It's plasma. Now, uh, plasma I means like fire. You know, fire isn't a physical thing. It's, uh, it's, you know, it, it's a, a state of something. It's, we don't even, you know, you ask a, a scientist, what, what's fire? Or they'll tell you, describe it, but you can't really tell you what it is. It's a plasma of some kind. It's, it's not part of the 3D world as such. It's energy. As you go up to the higher states of matter, you end up in states of energy. And what it seems to be, and this is, this is my feeling here, that, um, that as you go up the higher states of, of, of matter, you end up in a state of consciousness, which is what we are, you know? So perhaps we are the energy. Now, I was talking to um, a friend after uh, at another festival. Um, my friend was uh, actually supplying the power to the, uh, to the tent. And we're chatting about um, Masaru Emoto. Has everybody heard of, of him? Messages in Water. Um, 
and how his experiment with uh, getting water and placing a label over the, the container that says love and happiness and peace and joy and whatever, um, that affects the, the energy of the water and infuses that energy, that water, with, with that intention. Okay, we was, he was talking about that and he told me of, um, once he saw that for the first time, he decided to do, do a little experiment of his own. He got a, a dead battery. He got this dead battery, he couldn't, wouldn't hold a charge. He put a label on it that covered up the writing that was on the battery and he wrote 14 volts on the battery. Okay, put it up on a shelf and every so often he'd take the, sh the battery down and feel 14 volts, sit there and, and intend 14 volts into that battery. Uh, did that for a couple of weeks. And a couple of weeks later, put a meter on it, guess what? 14 volts. What if we are the energy? What if we're using metaphors to create energy, but we are the ones that are, are doing the creating? The energy is all around us. And we are a focal point of energy. What if, um, okay, I'm going off into a bit of metaphysics here, but uh, everything in this world starts out as an idea in somebody's head. Just an idea. Like if you wanted to make this chair. I want to make a chair and I, I design it in my head, okay? Now, we think that when we come to build that chair, you know, we use our hands, we, we, we cut down a tree, we plane wood, we do all this. There is no objective universe out there. This is all <coughs> ultimate pot um, potential, okay? We don't actually see the real world out here. We, we get it translated from, uh, to us by our, our brain. It's only receiving electrical signals. What out, what's out here isn't what we're seeing. So our perception is that we're using our hands to build this chair. But what's actually happening is a manipulation of energy yeah, at some level that we, we think we're controlling by a physical interaction, but we're actually making, manifesting, building this chair out of energy. Does that, do, do you follow that? I mean, yeah? yeah? yeah. And this idea that uh, a guy can just get a battery and put a label on it and put his intention on it to, to hold a charge, charges that battery. Whereas we think that we need to get this box and plug it into a wall and put um, leads on it and that charges the battery. No. It's our intention and our expectation that does it. But we need some kind of lever to do it. Some kind of tool to, or metaphor to do it. Yes? Um, a little experience I had. I went to an acupuncturist in London once, quite a few years ago. And he was trained by Tibetan monks. And he really knew his stuff. And um, he opened up my sense of the Explained it that when we are born, we are bristling with all those senses. But as we go through life, our senses are closed down. We go to school, we do this, we run down. We reawaken our senses. And I, some people would think I was mad at what I experienced, but I did experience a lot of energies and all those things. And it, I think it's very easy to keep close mind. You know, there's a lot out there we don't understand. Yep. This is what my, my talk was yesterday, actually, that uh, we have, according to the Sufis, 360 senses, not these five dull ones. <laughs> and we've just, uh, we've just been taught, no, that's all you got, that's all you got. <laughs> you know, get used to it. <laughs> but, you know, we, we do, we know that, about these senses, but we just take them for granted or just ignore them, because they're not in our, in our radar. Um, so how much energy is all around us? Most people think that the vacuum is empty. But for internal self-consistency consistency of quantum mechanics and relativity theory, there is required to be the equivalent of 10 to the 94 grams of mass energy, each gram being E equals mc squared kind of energy. 
Now that's a huge number, but what does it mean practically? Practically, if I can assume that the universe is flat, and more and more astronomical data is showing it's pretty darn flat, if I can assume that, then if I take the volume or take the vacuum within a single hydrogen atom, that's about 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters. If I take that amount of vacuum and I take the latent energy in that, there is a trillion times more energy there than in all of the mass of all of the stars and all of the planets up to 20 billion light years. That's big. That's big. And <laughs> consciousness allows you to control even a small fraction of that. Creating a big bang is no problem. That's, that's what quantum physics tells us. There is so much energy in everywhere, in everything. And as he says, consciousness controls it. He says some of it, but I, I, I like to say it controls all of it. Because it is it. Yeah, you can say? Uh, what is electricity and how is it defined? Yeah. What's the definition of energy? And then would you like to comment on how inadequate those two are? You're looking at me like I'm an expert, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to ask you. As I said, I, I think electricity is, is a mere byproduct of, of the real energy. And the real energy is everything that makes up this, this, this 3D universe. It is, everything is energy. When we think that there is separation between us, that the vacuum is empty, but we just said the vacuum isn't empty, it's bristling with energy. Everything. And, and electricity is, is, you know, is a kind of like, not like hokey byproduct, mm -hmm. hokey sort of, and we've built our whole technology around this, this stupid byproduct. And, and been, we've been told that that is the energy, that's what we've got to, um, to generate. And it's keeping us away from the real energy. And it's because that this hokey byproduct will allow these toys to run. And they're all toys. All our technology are toys. And like, um, you know, the coloured beads they bought um, Manhattan with. They're, they're not, they don't do anything for us. They might do, you know, do funny, clever things. But the toys are actually keeping us away from the things that we can do naturally. As I was saying, saying in my, um, my other talk, that we have abilities that allow us to do anything and everything and more than all of our technology will allow us to do and do it better. But we've been suckered into buy, you know, buying into all these toys and, uh, and letting them control our lives. But all I'm saying is that it's a, a byproduct. And the real energy is, is, is consciousness. Um, somebody else had a question? No? Okay. Um, so we're in a situation like this, you know? A fish saying, how am I going to generate water? We don't, it doesn't realize that water's all around it. Now, um, as I said, the, uh, the idea I'm, I'm, I'm proposing here is that, um, is that we're five minutes, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> um, the idea I'm proposing here is that um, the energy is, is, <laughs> is, is from us. It's, it's our intention that's creating this, and we're just using crutches to, uh, to, to find a way to, to access that. So I'm going to finish with another little, um, a little uh, clip from the same guy that I just played a minute ago. Um, uh, something to, to, to make you think about it. We took two simple black boxes like this. Uh, inside is a very simple electric circuit with a few diodes, uh, oscillator, EEPROM, some resistors and capacitors. Basically that's it. We wrap one in aluminum foil, we put it in an electrically grounded Faraday cage. The other, we set on a tabletop around which four very well qualified meditators, highly inner self-managed individuals sit. And they go into a deep meditative state, they cleanse the environment, 
They make it essentially a sacred space using their mind, cleansing procedures, and their intentions. And then one of the four speaks the specific intention for this device. The intention is to influence a particular target experiment. Uh, might be the, to increase the pH of purified water by one full pH unit, or to decrease the pH by one full pH unit. We've used these devices on all those experiments and have been robustly successful. In the meditative process, then after one speaks the particular intention, it's held various ways by the four for maybe 15 minutes, and then so be it, it's let go. And then a subsidiary intention is stated to seal that imprint into the device. We take one of these devices with its aluminum foil, we put it in a soft package, we put it in a FedEx packet, we ship it 2,000 miles away to the laboratory we were using up in uh, Minnesota. And as soon as it arrives there, it goes into its own electrically run Faraday cage. The next day we do the same with the control. The experiment is running, and basically then one just takes the device out, sets it beside the experiment within six inches to a foot, and turns it on for a period of time. That's it. Now, we learned over some period of time that there was another factor. We found that the use of these, we call them intention imprinted electrical devices, the continued use of this somehow conditions the space to some higher level of symmetry. And we start getting new phenomena. That is, the devices work. That is, the pH, which is normal, starts rising one full pH unit, if that was the imprint, or starts dropping. If you go one full pH unit or beyond, you're dead. I mean, that's what it means to a human. So, what they did, they just in, uh, imprinted some meaningless electronics. They just, just made, a, made up a circuit, didn't do anything as such. But they, they imprinted that circuit with an intention. And that intention made the thing work. Maybe we've got to start thinking differently about, um, about this, this idea of energy. We are the energy. And that's what I have to say. Lynn McFarland. <laughs> As I said, Dave's one of the uh, original men who stared at goats, you know, questioning, <laughs> questioning the vernacular and the terms we use, you know, because... Uh...